and this is the Adam Messer Show, and I'm your host, Adam Messer, and my special guest today is a really cool guy. Um, I met him through the internet <laughs> probably like uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe, or almost two years ago now, through a group called 20 Books to 50K. Um, his name is Craig Martell. He is uh, a retired Marine, an attorney, and a best-selling author. So, Craig, thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome. How are you? Happy to be here, Adam. Thanks for having me. I, I am doing just fine. It's a little chilly up here in the subarctic. So I live in the middle of Alaska, and uh, it's uh, showing 18 degrees, and it's windy as hell out there. So mm. a little, little bit chilly today. Mm. All right. So... <clears throat> Since the last time you were here, I, I don't know if, if um, on the last time, if Sebastian was playing or not, but my son Sebastian plays music on the show now. And oh, cool. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with that, so I'm going to go ahead. Sebastian, do you mind playing a little bit for us? Oh, there we go. And this is Sebastian Messer, everybody. Thank you, Sebastian. <clears throat> and everybody listening at home, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, I want to go ahead and make one of the uh, announcements. Of course, it's the elephant in the room. Everybody's been talking about COVID-19. Uh, but this is one of the station announcements. This is a message from the Georgia State Department of Public Health. Right now, federal and state guidelines recommend staying home if possible and limiting time in public places as precautions associated with social distancing. The more we use social distancing techniques, the more we reduce the risk of the virus spreading. This is especially important for older people and those with underlying health conditions who are most vulnerable to the virus. More information can be found at dph.georgia.gov. And that's dph.georgia.gov. So, all right, uh, Craig. So thank you so much, man. I really appreciate, um, you were like one of the first guests that I had on the show when I started, um, June of 2018. And, uh, so I'm coming up <clears throat> on the, the um, uh, it's actually kind of like getting close to my second anniversary here. And I'm really happy to have you on because, you know, I, I watch, um, what you do. I, I, I see what, you know, you're sharing and how you help people. Um, with their authorship and their goals and you do so much to help other folks. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm constantly amazed at how much you give back to the community. Um, so can you give everybody like a little, uh, overview, a brief, um, intro for yourself? Holy cow. I'm supposed to always be ready for that. Uh, of course. Uh, but no, I, I retired from the Marine Corps and, in the Marines, we always have to do things that you don't necessarily want to do, but you do them anywhere because that's uh, it's it's what you have to do. And after that, I always had was compelled to give back, whether it was uh, uh, through community giving, through volunteer service, for uh, through things like that. Then I got my law degree, went to, into business consulting, and did very very well. And then finally, I was tired of being away from home, so that's when I said it's time to write my write my book that I always wanted to write. I wrote it. I, I enjoyed it. It took me two months to write that first book, which was a hundred thousand words. And then, uh, I pretty much produced at least one book every month, uh, from there on out. <clears throat> and I, uh, I really like the writing process, but one thing of, uh, of writing, it's a very personal endeavor, but then as, as more and more people, as I contacted them and, and got in touch and became a member and, and a uh, contributing member to the 20 books, 50 K group, it was obvious that <clears throat> there were people who didn't have any idea about the business side of it. And I, I had been a business consultant for seven years. So I, I really did understand how uh, cash flow worked and, and how paying for ads and return on investment and all those things that you need to do as a self-published author. Cause you wear all the hats right. as an in, 
But one thing that I, I found that I could help people with was demystifying the process of the business side. Because if you're an author and the only thing you want to do is write, you are going to be beholding to other people constantly. You're going to be begging them for money, for contracts, for books. You're going to be doing proposals on books that they'll reject. So you're wasting all this intellectual capital working for somebody else when the business is not so prohibitive that you can't that you can't get uh, the job done. Yeah. You still focus on your writing. So if you if you can do that handle the business side you can focus on the writing and you're going to find your life is very very well enriched so that's what i that's what i wanted to uh, contribute to the business and then oh by the way i uh, i met michael anderley we we talked on the phone quite a few times then i started co-writing with him and and was very very successful with uh, a couple different series that i worked with on uh, with michael and then now all of a sudden I'm, I'm running 20 books to 50 K I'm running conferences for self-published authors and the giving back has taken on a life of its own. And it's so damn rewarding that that's now my primary job. So I contribute full-time hours to making sure that other authors have information they need and, and have access to, to people and information and in times like this, right now, it kind of sucks. World's a, world's a rough place. Uh, people are being uh, asked, stay in your houses, don't do anything. Do change your lives in entirety. And, oh, what, by the way, you should probably be afraid. And this is an opportunity for us to reach out through 39,000 members of 20 Books to 50K and say, you can take control of your destiny, especially as a self-published author, while you're stuck inside. Mm -hmm. Write that next book. Edit that last book. Put out a new ad. Do these things that are not prohibitive, not expensive to do, because people may not have a whole lot of money right now, or or they're shepherding their funds. All of it's possible, and this is this is one of the things Michael and I agree on is that helping others has a value in and of itself. Yeah, I still make all my money off fiction. I don't make my money off uh, twenty books to fifty k. That's not what I do. I I do write nonfiction, but that was out of necessity and to save me time. Yeah. So I have books on self-publishing, but that's just that's a minor part of uh, of my business. I make. I actually have all back. of your uh, self-publishing books. I picked up the last one the other day. <clears throat> oh, so, cool. Yeah, I've read. Um, I've been reading through them. I read the um, the indie successful indie uh, book. Um, gosh, I become a successful indie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that one, and then I've been. Uh, I started reading the other ones. Um, but what I found is really incredible with the group and, and uh, you know, how Michael Anderley started the group with the idea of, you know, if you could publish 20 books, you know, to make $50,000, you know, on average or whatever, which some people don't make that, but <clears throat> whatever. I, I thought the idea was so interesting and, um, you know, the it's so funny because my, my backstory was I had just uh, – published my first novella and I came across the, the group and, um, and I, I actually had read, <laughs> I'd actually read the, um, the no promo thing and I had published, I had, I had clicked and pasted, copied and pasted a thing that I'd been sharing and uh, I was in the middle of deleting out <laughs> the link and I was like, Oh my, I got, I forgot. Sh I forgot to de delete it or whatever. And I had been, um, I had been kicked from the group. And so <laughs> like, like w within the, the amount, I, I like, I went to click to, you know, save and it says this post is no longer available. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So I, that's actually how I reached out to you because I looked for the page admins and like, I saw your face and I was like, well, this guy seems like, you know, he probably, I had no idea who you were or didn't, you know, know anything about the <clears throat> 20 books um, group really. And it's, since I joined, it's become a lot more active. I mean, like even then, I think there were over twenty thousand members then, and it's yeah. almost seemed like it's doubled in the last year or so, uh, because there's so many more people out there. But this group has been, I think, one of the best groups as far as resources that are available, as far as um, the support and the help from other authors now i can't i can uh, i'll be honest with it there are some times where i get a little uh perturbed at some of the snarky comments that people make um and that's i think that's just the internet 
You know, I yeah. think I think people can like, and we can't cuss on the show, but I love I love the motto <laughs> that you have on it. It's like you know, don't be a bleep, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. But that's that's one of the things I, I like how you know because my background is in business and leadership. I have an MBA, and I loved that that you you're an ops guy. Like you're like okay. Let's get the, the logistics, you know, let's, like you said, demystify that side of the, the business because it's not just about the writing. Like the writing is like the tip of the iceberg, right? It's all the other, you know, stuff that you have to do and that we luckily we live in an age where we can do this because I remember as a kid, I'm, I'm 43 now, but I remember as a kid, you couldn't self-publish. I mean, no. If you yeah. wanted to self-publish, you'd go to, you know, like a copy place and you'd, <laughs> you'd print off a manuscript yourself and maybe... The, the blue ink, the blue ink mimeograph. Yeah, that was self-publishing. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, You know, but today we can, you know, we can do so many things and, and I love how, you know, with, and it's not, not, you know, I'm not trying to fanboy here, but I love how, you know, you really try to show people like the ups and downs you know, not just the good side of it, because I mean, you know, there's people in there making six figures, and then there's other folks like me who are not really making any money, and then you, you show them like the ups and downs. Like I remember last year, you're talking about your trajectory for for your sales, yeah. and not, you know, not hitting where you wanted to be, you know, but then you adjusted as you went along, and you shared that data with people, and you shared the you know the numbers, and said, hey, you know, like even with this uh, COVID nineteen crisis. You know, you've been sharing, you know, because there's some people like I read a post this morning and you commented on it where a lady had said that her buy button was missing on Amazon. And yeah. you're like, OK, you know, this is a technical glitch. You know, it's going to happen. There's no reason to panic kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Send a note to them, which is all they would say. Hey, contact our customer service. Mm -hmm. And and if enough people are missing buy buttons, the button to buy your book, then the technical team will look and say, oh, geez, we, we ran a, a new program because Amazon isn't one program. It's millions of, right. of programs trying to interact. So not, they don't always play nice together. So if there's enough uh, of those complaints, then their technical team will jump in and see what happened. And if they can clean it up, then everybody's buy button will be restored at one time. And it's it's a it's a glitch because not everybody was affected. Yeah, mine so wasn't affected. So it was just playing with stuff. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Let me do a station ID real quick, uh, Craig. You bet. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Adam Messer Show. You're listening here on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. So, Craig. You know, you're going to be on today, and then um, you're going to be coming back on in a couple of weeks. Um, I would love if, and, and I know you, you have, like, these different resources. Like, I saw that you had your um, nonfiction uh, YouTube show today. Um, you also do a show with uh, Michael um, where you, you talk about the, you know, the publishing business and stuff like that. Um, could you, could we talk about the like let's just say you got somebody who's um brand new or like myself i'm you know i'm still new to the industry um can can you kind of just walk us through like a, a basic game plan of okay now you know i'm not talking about the writing part because there's a, a billion things out there about the writing but like the business aspect of it um can you give us kind of like a little you know gameplay of like hey this is these are the things that I wish I had known when I first started that helped me or, or some of the key things that you've learned over the last several years being an indie published author. One of the, one of the things I did, and this is from my business consulting background, is I planned for success. <clears throat> I built a, a business structure that was predicated on whether I sold one book or a hundred books or a million dollars worth of books with a movie deal. So my business structure would support all of that, but it was still a sole proprietorship, but I still have everything in place. I have the insurance policies. I have the other uh, elements. I have the business bank account. And to get a lot of the things you need as a self-published author, you need to be your own business. So the first thing I, I have to harp on is you have to write the book. 
Mm-hmm. Don't get quagmired in your business uh, checkbook and and doing all those wondrous things with the money you're going to make <laughs> if you don't have a book yet. Right. You got you got to write that book. Right. So write the book and then start getting it edited, get it get it reviewed, get it peer reviewed, get get those things so you can tell it's a good book because it's got to be a good story. Uh, first and foremost, quality trumps everything. The quality of the story, maybe not the technical quality of, yeah, there's a few typos and stuff like that, but the story still has to be sound. So you need to have a business structure, which is simply, I, I in, in Alaska, it's like ridiculously simple. You go online, you buy yourself a business license for 50 bucks. You set up something else for 50 bucks and there you are, 100 bucks total. And you've got a business for two years. So I have my, I have my, my, uh, uh, you get a free tax identify, uh, an EIN employer identification number from the IRS. That's easy to do uh, from the state. I've got my tax ID number and I've got what I need all really, really easy stuff. And I think I detail that in my, uh, become a successful indie author book. <clears throat> the other elements to, for that is you have to establish a brand and as an author what is your brand so you, you want to when you go on social media if you establish your own uh, author page which is something i did i established an author page for me that is just for fans and that's where i post some content i would post things i, I stay away from politics i stay away from religion yeah i focus on science fiction that's my that's my bailiwick which makes it really easy I mean, if you wrote political thrillers, you would have to choose a side or always be looking at the, the political turmoil. And I, I'm glad I don't write political thrillers because I don't, I don't want to go there. I like science fiction. Yeah. So I that's my brand. And also part of my brand has become the uh, uh, helping other authors through 20 books to 50K through my nonfiction books. So that bleeds over into my science fiction brand as – Hey, here's here's the guy who helps other people, mm-hmm. and oh, there's, a, there's a science fiction book or or a hundred that you could mm-hmm. uh, that you could look at from them. And I, I it has given me access to an incredible amount of people in the business who I can ask questions uh, from. I I reach out to people, and I'm surprised because they know who I am. And these are people with who have movies made of their books, who have uh, are million sellers, New York Times best selling authors tens of millions of books in the marketplace it is uh it's really amazing how small the community can be when you start when you uh establish yourself and 20 books of 50k makes that possible for just about anybody that you don't need to start with 100 grand in the bank there's such a low cost of entry for a self-published author you could start with almost nothing and build it up and a great example of that is barry hutchison he lives in the Scottish Highlands, and he only spent money that he made. He made his own covers. He did his own editing. He mm-hmm. did. He shared and got other people to read his books to, to look for typos. And then as he made money off his books, he reinvested that, so he never spent a penny out of his savings account and, and has been wildly successful. His uh, uh, Scottish crime fiction is, is wildly successful and put him – up at the top of the UK crime fiction chart, which is a pretty big deal. So good for Barry, but that's just one thing. Now, Barry was an established writer. He was with traditional publishing for, geez, 30 years. However, it was children's stories. <clears throat> it still teaches it teaches you some things. But with 20 books to 50K, all the resources are there for different ways to advertise, different markets to look at, and it's all through shared success stories Mm -hmm. here's what worked for me here's what doesn't work and and that's important because we don't we aren't prescriptive we actually uh uh, kick people out for being prescriptive where they say you have to do this you don't have to do anything right there's some things that have worked for me like setting up my business like establishing my brand early and that goes to like my cover art if you look at my covers all hundred and some of them you're going to find that craig martell is all caps in in block text on every one of my covers it's very very consistent across all of them and that's something that i that i uh, wanted to do <clears throat> and my my science fiction i do all almost all character driven whether it's uh, science fiction post-apocalyptic even my one thriller that i wrote is still uh, character driven 
I try to have eight characters around which that that then drive the plot forward. So my consistency <clears throat> for a business. Uh, so your business setup, your brand, and production. You have to uh, manage your reader expectations, and by that I mean if you if you tell them you're going to do something, you better do it. Yeah. If you say I will have a short story for you next month, you better have a short story for them next month until you're well, well established. Like now after a hundred books, if I told them I'm going to have a book next month and I don't, they'll be more forgiving unless I do that too often. But I, I tell them, if I tell them I have a book next what, month, they can pretty much guarantee I will have one next month. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a big part of it too, for me uh, is the consistency in writing. Um, for example, I think you posted that you write about 2,000 words a day or 2,500 words a day or something like that? Yes. Yeah, right around that. And you're a big um, proponent for outlining, right? I am not. I, I have done it. I, I never used to do it. And then I got so busy, I'm like, I, I have to be more efficient with my time. So I outlined, and then I found that I didn't really didn't really abide by them, even though I had some I had some very quick stories that I wrote because I had an outline, but I think that was more from thinking through the whole story from start to finish ah. before I started writing, as opposed to just writing and then trying to fill in that story. Cause I'll write the first chapter and I'll write the last chapter. And then I fill in everything else in between. So when I outlined, it was, it was thinking through that. So I did write a little faster, but I found that I, I am, if I spend the time to just think about it, that will be good enough and will help me be more efficient with my my time do you um when you're thinking about your books uh, and this is this is this is what happens for me but does it kind of play out like a movie in your head it plays out more like reality ah. i can put my i can put myself into it more like uh, i guess the most modern vr virtual reality systems it's more like that so i can i can turn and look left and look right and see what's there and then is it important to the story? Write it in. If it's not, ignore it. Sometimes a smell is important. Other times it's not. So just know when to add that three-dimensionality. Yeah, it's, for me, it's it's kind of like watching a movie uh, sometimes un unfold. I'd, I haven't gotten to the point where I feel like I'm actually in the scene itself or in the story itself. <laughs> That's really cool, yeah. though. But this morning, I forgot where I was. My, my wife was in Spain for all of this and... and made it back so she's under quarantine here in, in Fairbanks so I'm in a hotel and, and this morning I was working I was in a story and I looked left where the, the clock is on my wall in, in my office and uh, it's not there because I'm I'm in a hotel because mm. I had completely forgotten where I was I was focused uh, so much on my because I have two monitors here in the hotel room just like I just like I do at home because I I, I mean it's a, it's a minimal requirement this is my business so I, uh, I am set up well, no matter where I go, and uh, it, it it was unique. I was so into the story, and I was right now. The ten minutes I had ten minutes before you were going to call, and I'm like, let me let me jam this last scene. I got five hundred words in in yeah. that ten minutes wow. because I was so into this. And it, and that's when you called because you called and I didn't answer because I'm like, oh geez, I got to go take care of something real quick before. Uh, uh, before i answer and so i called you back and here we are <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a, that's pretty cool i think that <clears throat> uh writing for me some is is kind of like that with that escapism um you know you, you do at least for me i feel like i can get caught up in the moment and um i love it and then you know th i think uh with the process for writing so so i've i've been writing um for a while now but fiction writing i've only i only started doing fiction writing maybe in 2018 and um i've been working on my back catalog so but some of the things that, that i've I, and I'll, I'll just share this with you there, there's so much information out there um you know like we have there's so much information out there especially like you said about people you know being prescriptive you know saying oh you should do this or you should do that there's so much stuff out there sometimes it's hard to um you know to to weed through it and <clears throat> even like on the 20 books to 50 K group, yes. there's a, you know, there are files after files, after files, after files of stuff yeah. that you can, you know, you can get lost in just trying to, you know, figure out like, okay, 
and I, I feel like what's be, been working best for me is, you know, trying to do different things. Like, you know, I, I rebooted my, um, my email list and, nice. um, I do my own covers. I do my own, um, editing and stuff like that, but reaching out to other people, you know, like here in Savannah, um, I do, well, um, I've had a couple of, uh, events that I've done. We do a charitable event called books and brews where we help Good. raise money for, uh, the Ronald McDonald house and just trying to build that community. <clears throat> I love doing that. And I feel like that's one way that really helps me with, you know, writing and my authorship. Um, and certainly, I mean, like, you know, with the 20 books, to 50 K group, you know, y'all have put on some really, you know, world-class events. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to think that our conferences are, are the best in the world for self-published authors. They're uh, definitely the biggest. Uh, this this year, it's uh, we have 1,500 people already signed up uh, for <clears throat> November. We're sold out because we're, we're at max capacity for that hotel. We have the whole hotel. But it's uh, we have 135 sessions this year of speakers panels workshops and that is that is what makes it world class the attitude of the people there have you you've been to a show haven't you no i haven't been um i have i've watched a bunch of the live feeds though uh because yeah. i i live here in savannah and i haven't been able to, to travel over there because of my work but i do try to catch as many of the live feeds as i can because the information is just so yeah. awesome well, and, and then we record them all and put them on YouTube. They're available for anybody. Mm -hmm. It's not just for paid people who paid to come to the show, which we do it at cost. It's a not-for-profit show. Yeah. So, I, I mean, you can get a ticket. This year you could get a ticket for $129 wow. for five days of content, 135 sessions, and access to, I think we'll have a dozen seven-figure authors, 150 authors making six figures, another 75 making – almost six so we have what 250 people making uh full-time money you know what is really pay, interesting i think what's really interesting about that though is because of the way um y'all structure the group it's it's almost uh i don't know how to say this but it, it's almost like you get people that are there because of the same reasons that you're there you know what i mean and yeah. the other folks that aren't there for that reason, they kind of weed themselves out. They kind of just, you know, self-select and, yeah. you know, they, yeah. they don't stay in the group very long. Or if they do, they lurk and they don't really interact uh, with the group and, you know, certainly don't really contribute. But there are so many people that do, you know, that they contribute and they help out and they're trying to, you know, encourage each other and they share, like, you know, the end posts and stuff like that. And Yep, yep. Um, let me do the station ID real quick, everybody. Uh, we've got a, a couple of announcements that we need to do. Um, today, my special guest is Craig Martell. He is a best-selling author, retired Marine, uh, an attorney. Um, and you're listening to The Adam Messer Show here on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. Here is an announcement about the COVID-19 <clears throat> on canceled events and things like that. This message is from the Georgia State Department of Public Health. Right now, federal and state guidelines recommend staying home if possible and limiting time in public places as precautions associated with social distancing. The more we use social distancing techniques, the more we reduce the risk of the virus spreading. This is especially important for older people and those who with underlying health conditions who are most vulnerable to this virus. More information can be found at dph.georgia.gov. dph.georgia.gov. This is WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. This portion of WRUULP, Savannah Soundings programming is brought to you by listeners and the Ships of the Sea Museum. One of the hidden secrets of the Ships of the Sea Museum is its gardens. 
Native plants are interspersed with exotic tropical plants throughout the gardens. Visitors to Savannah can bring in their takeout meals and dine among the trident maples and use the complimentary Wi-Fi. You can find out more about the Ships of the Sea Museum at the website shipsofthesea.org. All right, everybody, this is Sebastian Messer playing some live music for us. If you're just now tuning in, um, thank you so much for listening in. And I got a message from Terry and Darlene. It says, the Isle of Hope is enjoying today's show. So thanks a lot, Terry and Darlene, for listening in. Appreciate it. And thanks a lot, everybody, that uh, is tuning in today. So uh, my special guest is Craig Martell. And, Craig, we have been chit-chatting um, this first half hour about just kind of like uh, your – overview of how you started with you know your business and looking at it from your um your i guess your perspective of of how things should operate you know i mean especially with you being a marine and an attorney and then you know having that you know business background as well um you know you have you have a lot of experience with that talk about the writing um because i know i mean like just from different posts or stuff like that you used to read a lot of sci-fi, right? Uh, fanatically. I've, I've read thousands of books. Mm-hmm. That's what I grew up doing. I I wrote a book, actually, when I was 13 years old. Oh, wow. But then, uh, you know, got into high school, and my, my competition there was to get into the Air Force Academy and uh, go in the military. And once I did that, I focused my complete effort on the military, and that took me away for 20-some years during that whole time though i read books Mm -hmm. so i think that that prepared me very well for here's the kind of stories i like here's the ones that i really liked and here's why because i always uh analyzed everything i did uh for for my entire time in the marine corps yes i know went to the air force academy and went in the marine corps hooray for me got uh, good decisions good life decisions and uh i uh was in i was in military intelligence Oh, wow. so I was always analyzing, and so I was, while I was reading these science fiction books, I was still thinking that I like that, and it would I would uh, chalk that away. And then when I started writing, I, I drew on this wealth of of knowledge from reading so much. Yeah, and I think every every great writer is a, a great reader first. You know, as a kid, I read a ton of sci fi and fantasy, and then as an adult, I've read mostly nonfiction, and I read okay. every day. Um, but I agree with you. I feel like, you know, uh, everything that we're doing, like conversations, you know, writing, all that is all about storytelling. You yes. know, it all comes back to, you know, telling a story <laughs> and then sharing it with your audience. And, uh, yeah, reading is definitely one of those things. I love audiobooks too. And I'll, I'll catch, um, on my ride into work and out of work, I'll catch a, you know, like I'll listen to an audio book. And I wasn't a big fan of it at first because uh, I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's not the same as reading. But then I found a lot of the books are actually, um, you can listen to them and the author narrates them. Or, you know, there are full production uh, voice actors who will uh, narrate the books. Sometimes it's like a full production, like uh, the Dracula. I've been listening to that one. And it's a full production work. Um, I've also been listening to Best, uh, I'm sorry, Good Omens. Uh, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, and it's it's not a full cast production, but the uh, the narration is just so awesome. So yeah, 
that I think is one of the the biggest things. So when you know, and this is something that, that like really kind of concerns me with people when they they say that they write but they don't read. Yeah, and I, I just I don't get that. I mean, like I don't read because I have to. I read because I like it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I I do nuclear physics, but I don't do engineering. <laughs> I, I, I'm I, I'm sorry. I don't I, I don't see how you can how you can do one and not the other. Because uh, from a reader, I, I look at things from a reader's perspective, mm-hmm. especially when I'm going through and rereading my own stuff. Mm-hmm. I like this. This is too flat. This is too – there's too much extra stuff here. The flow is off or, or whatever. I, I mean I, I look at it with a critical eye. But from a reader's perspective, I, I don't ever want to turn off a reader where they start skipping stuff mm-hmm. or they put the book down. If they put it down – then they're probably not going to pick it back up, and I don't ever want I don't ever want that to happen. And they're not likely to pick up your next one either. That's right. That's right. Because they will have moved on, especially in today's society of binging. I, I find people. I'm working on the ninth book in my judge, jury, and executioner series, and I found out when I published the eighth book, people are like, "Great, give me a reason to go back and read reread one through seven. And then there was a guy who told me that. Oh great! I just found this series. I read all eight books in three days. Wow! I love those people. Yeah. I love those people. <laughs> so, because I, I've been working, and I, I would consider my uh, that series to be my very best. It's the epitome of everything I've learned in what I've pu- in publishing four million words and storytelling as a whole, and the revision of my insider team, the people who are reviewing my work, and my editors, and and everybody. It's all coming together where. I think this is this is my best series so far. So, so you, you have, I think you posted about this, but you have an, a similar series, right? Um, then you have like two series, and then you were doing the one, and you switched over to this one, right? Yes, I, I have. I have Bad Company, which is kind of a predecessor to this one, and this one was a spinoff of Bad Company, and the Bad Company is a successor to the Terry Henry Walton Chronicles. So. In that whole series with those characters and the spin-offs, we have over 30 books. Wow. And these are full-length, well, these are big books. But the, the most recent one, this series, we're actually, we've actually rewritten book six completely. You get Savannah, Georgia, the Dragon the Dragon Award, Dragon Con in Atlanta. Uh, it's, it's competitive for that. So oh, we're wow. pushing that. Uh, Fratricide by Craig Martell, look for it. And uh, nominated for the best science fiction novel of the year, if uh, if you're so inclined. Not that I would tempt that on your show, but fratricide. Yeah, we're a community radio station. We're not allowed to sell anything. <laughs> but we can tell people where to check stuff out. Uh, yeah, and Dragon yeah, well, Con, yeah, is I think Dragon yeah, Con, like, it. well, yeah, no, no, no. Um, Dragon Con, though, I think is one is like you talk about like the biggest. Um, Dragon Con is like the biggest convention, especially you know for sci-fi geeks and nerds like us. You know, it is massive. Yeah, and it's – so for anybody listening out there, um, Savannah is on the coast of Georgia, like southeast coast, and Atlanta is about four hours um, north of us, which is not a bad drive or whatever. And Dragon Con is this huge sci-fi uh, convention, and it was it was started, oh gosh, like 20-something years ago. Um, I have a bunch of friends that go every year, and uh, it's, it's, it's great for – authors though too because one of the things that you know people do is they read and one of the things that people like us like to do is read and so they have these awards every year um i actually kind of crazy but i actually joined the horror writers association uh last year as a member as an active member and um that association they have i think like 1600 members um total and you know i think joining associations and joining groups you know like that one you have to pay uh, members fees and stuff like that but like the 20 books to um 50k group there's no membership um and like the stuff that you guys put on like you said earlier you are only charging costs you're not charging an overhead you're not um making a profit off of it even like your um your self-publishing books you know you have often given them away um, or you'll have it reduced to like 99 cents, you know, yep. things like that. And, you know, that I love, I love the fact that, you know, 
in today's world, like I said earlier, there's so much stuff out there. I love the fact that there, you know, folks like you and the folks that, you know, the are in the 20 books of 50 K that they're like, Hey, you know, one of the things that you say all the time is a rising tide lifts all boats. And I love that. I just love that because I, I've said that, um, not that same thing, but I've always said like, you know, there's no limit to the pie. You know, there's, yeah. there's enough for everybody. I mean, it's not, you know, there's not a limit on, you know, what you can do. And just because you're being successful doesn't infringe on me being successful. And, you know, when you reciprocate and help other people, cause I, I love helping other people. It makes it better for everybody. There's a, there's a billion readers of English books, of books written in English. A I, I think there's plenty, wow. plenty of room to go around. Wow. That is just amazing. I, I didn't even know that. How do you, um, <clears throat> and I, this might be because you know a lot of people in the industry, but how do you come across like the different statistics and stuff like that, that you post and that you share? Is it just, because really, I don't know of any industry uh, type magazines or anything like that that shares that kind of information and traditional publishers are not sharing really any information now it's it's far and wide now traditional publishing the good thing about public sales and and having a really smart people is we we uh, we know alex newton who runs Klytics, and he is able to scrape the net and find all of their public offerings and guesstimate what their sales are what mm. their sales numbers are so he, he he compiles that, he pulls numbers every single day. Hmm. All of the books for sale every single day. And sees where they're ranked, their movements, and he's got all of his, uh, his calculations set up. So he can see, okay, this book now at the top, the top 100, he's always calculating those and seeing and estimating sales. So he can tell you what the trends are in books. He can show you, hey, here's the covers of the trending books. And you, you draw your own conclusions. He just shares the data. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a paid-for site. But because we know Alex, Alex is a great guy out of, out of Germany, we we get some more insider information. We're able to ask questions, too. So it uh, Publishers Weekly, we've met with them. Because of the, the 20 books to 50K events, last year we had pretty much everybody, anybody who was anybody was at the show. And this year, even more anybody who is anybody will be at the show. We've got uh, two to three people from Apple coming as well as a small army from Amazon, uh, Kobo. We don't have anybody from Barnes & Noble, but we have uh, um, every all, all the major audiobook producers who, who work with Indies, Dreamscape, Tantor, Podium, Audible. All of them will be there. We'll have representatives at the show. So this is an opportunity for – and every single person who got a ticket has access to the same group. Yeah. So it's not just, hey, me, I run this show, and here's my big benefit is I have – exclusive access to these folks now they do they do hunt me down and, and shake my hand well maybe not this year maybe we'll do jazz hands but uh, yeah <laughs> uh, i love how you wore the tyrannosaurus rex costume oh geez yeah yeah that uh oh my god i couldn't breathe in that thing <laughs> i love it it's your profile picture right now too um let me do a station id real quick everybody you're listening to wruulp savannah georgia 107.5 fm dot org we are savannah soundings community radio with global soul yeah I, I i love the fact that um you know you're a, you're a real person I, I know that sounds cliche but you're a real person um you share with folks um you know things that are going on um you share with people you know like hey you know i'm having a rough day today y'all i mean you know or i'm having a great day today and I think that is one of the neat things about the time that we live in because it is accessible for everybody, you know, and you know, people can do their own thing and they can, you know, whatever level that they're able to do it at, you know, like I work full time. A lot of the folks that are the, the successful authors, they're there. That's their, you know, full time plus job, you know, that they write folks like me, I'm working and then I write, and when I get home, you know, it's like my part-time job that I try to put full-time hours in. <laughs> but, yeah. but you know, it's, um, that's one of the things I like about that. It's like, you know, you're not, you're not, um, you know, you, you've had really good success with the, uh, the group, you and Mike Landerly and then other folks. Um, but you're not, uh, 
how do I say this? There are some folks out there who become kind of like a celebrity and they distance themselves and they, they're, they're, oh, I'm not accessible. And that's for good reason. I mean, there are some really crazy folks out there that, you know, stalk people <laughs> and things like that. But there are <laughs> the fact that, um, you know, like even you doing the show today, you know, making time to do this today on a Sunday and, uh, you know, you could be doing other things. You could be writing right now, you know, whatever. But, you know, I, I really appreciate you doing that kind of stuff because it's, I, I've seen it over and over and over consistently that, you know, you, you give back and give back and give back. And then you're not really asking, I mean, like the 20 books of 50 K group, um, you're not trying to make any money off of it. It's just like, kind of like, Hey, we're all in this together. Let's figure this out and try to work our way through it. You bet. And when, when people share success stories, I learn things too. Every single day I get to learn something new. And that's a, a great benefit for the, from the group. <clears throat> the, uh, like, uh, COVID-19. All right. Mm -hmm. Everybody is, uh, uh, in, let's just say a high state of anxiety mm -hmm. because of it. A lot of people are doing what they don't normally do, which is stay home. The extroverts are not okay, but writers, <laughs> right. the vast majority of us, this is what we do. Right. We sit inside, we stay on our computers. We do, we, we do what we need to do. We write our stories. It's, it's a very individual and private endeavor. Well, we can help a lot of folks with our work process. Here's what we do. Here's how we manage and, and just reach out and talk to people and, and make them feel more comfortable with this. And with the group, we have uh, nearly 39,000 members now, just, just giving them something every day, like the, uh, the, the Velasa rapture that I keep messing with Mark Dawson on. So uh, yeah, I published a short story on that today. It took me two minutes to write that. <laughs> but, what? <laughs> I, was, I was in the zone and, uh, it's always fun messing with Mark in that way you know i reached out to mark uh dawson as well um but he declined to do an interview because he said he's too busy so but yeah. i love his group too the spf group um yeah. he is another uh guy that and, and of course he's got a <clears throat> he's got a uh, program that he sells but his group he sh he shares a lot of helpful information and yeah. um definitely as a self a publishing author uh i i love uh i love what he's doing as well yeah, you bet. Well, one thing that he does, <clears throat> he personally doesn't make money off the uh, the self publishing formula courses. He he employs a lot of people, and yeah. they make their living off that. So he provides the courses and provides the material, but he he gets to test bed a lot of stuff that then he incorporates into his own business, his own multi million dollar business. I'll tell you what his, I've been seeing with uh, <laughs> talking about Mark Dawson. Um, I've been watching videos on, uh, Facebook, like, you know, the little video stream on my phone yeah. and I, those little video ads that pop up, I've been seeing his, like, he's got a new book out and like, it's got a little Raven yeah. and it's got this little house or whatever. And I thought, man, that is really interesting because I haven't seen those kind of ads for an author, kind of like a video ad. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's something, you know, like trending or something newer, because usually he's like on the cutting edge of advertising. Yes. So are you. That's right. That's right. He, he And he test bets that stuff. And we, we tried we tried video ads and they're they're really tough to get traction. Now, people people watch videos so they catch them, especially if you've got autoplay turned on on uh, like a Facebook ad. Mm -hmm. You'll see it. It'll be playing and you'll catch it. You get like three seconds or, or five seconds is all of someone's attention. But those kinds of things, finding those, it's, it's a little bit spendy, and finding the track, find the one that gets you traction, that's a, that's a challenge. And that last one from Mark, that was a home run. That was oh right, yeah, there. I agree. I think that one is definitely, uh, you know, caught my interest. When I was looking at it. So, um, we've got a few minutes left on this hour, Craig. What would you say to a person that this is, you know, like? I want to talk more about this in the next hour too, but what would you say to the person that's just now getting into self publishing today? And like, where would, what, like, where would you say, you know, the best place to start like today, the one thing that they could do today? Oh, geez. I'd say, I'd say get my book. I just ended a free run. So I don't, I mean, it, it uh, you could have gotten it for free yesterday. And that, that book outlines 90% of what you need to do. And it's uh, 125 pages, so it's not like quick and easy. 
There's certain things you need to do and just certain things you look at. I always tell people, learn what you need to know when you need to know it. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of people, especially people who are like halfway through their, their first book and they see the finish line and they're like, okay, when I finish, what else am I going to do? Oh, my God, I got to start my newsletter. Oh, I have to write reader magnets. Oh, I have to do – you don't have to do anything except finish that damn book. And then start looking at, hey, how do I now build an audience? How do I – reach that audience how do i have a business where i can take in money uh, and where i can use it to buy paperbacks and then my business then can get a a table at a convention and and sell books there or how do i get an online maintain an online presence Mm -hmm. which social media sites do i need to get on and and you can get overwhelmed in a hurry (laughs) yeah and all all of a sudden now you can't finish your book you haven't finished your book and you're starting to spend money getting a bank account and seeding it and doing these other things. And you don't even have a book yet. That's so I always caution new authors. You finish that book before you do anything else. So what I'm hearing you say is the first thing that people should do if they're becoming an author or they want to be an author is to actually write the book. Well, cause it's, it's hard work and some people you start writing, okay, Hey, I can do this. And then you get lost in the business and then you dabble and, and, Writing a book is hard, hard work. It's like putting together a string of pearls. Each scene is a pearl, but you still have to have the cord. You have to knot in between each pearl and and then connect the pearls, connect all those scenes mm-hmm. until you have one smooth story. That's not easy because the connections, making a hundred knots in between scenes can be kind of dull and boring and, and like work. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to demonstrate to yourself that you can do that start to finish in a book. To write a 60,000-word book, it takes about 80 hours of focused concentration. That's it. Some people take 10 years to write a book. Oh, I've got a great story about that for me. (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to share it this next hour. Um, We're going to take a a short break until 4 o'clock. Everybody, you've been listening to WRUU LP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. <laughs> 